Ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is a grudge match. Signed a little over a week ago. This is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from Harrow Athletics, weighing in at 226 pounds. This is the Dragonfly, Mark Harrow. And he comes out wrapped in the chain he used to bludgeon Chris Wilde in a parking lot. An unprovoked attack by the madman Mark Haro. And he has parlayed that personal acrimony into a shot at the Mid-Atlantic Championship. Look, management did not want this match to happen. But Chris Wilde did. And he said, very pointedly, I have done everything this company has asked of me. I am not asking you, I am telling you, give me Mark Haro in an ECWA ring. And that's exactly what he's gonna get in mere moments. Something you might not know about Mark Haro, he got his start in ECWA a long, long time ago. He was trained at the long time defunct ECWA Wrestle Fest. To mention this match is for the Mid-Atlantic. Heavyweight Championship, this is a championship match. Introducing from Atlantic City, New Jersey, weighing at 196 pounds, he is the current ECWA Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Champion, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the heart killer, Chris Wilde! And wait a minute, Chris Wilde's left the title with us. And he goes right after Mark Haro. The bell has rung your referee in charge, Mike Keener. Why is it a yard sale on the commentary position tonight? But I digress, as two men who hate each other are going after one another. I haven't seen this belt in a couple months since Ulala had it. It's nice to have it right there. Yeah, back. this is the closest you've been for a while. Yeah. Hey, where did little Mikey's phone go? Uh, it is still here, sir. Okay. Now, I, I was uh, wrong in saying, Earl, just a few moments ago, Mark Haro, uh, if that's what you're going to call him, uh, he trained here ECWA a long, long time ago in the WrestleTech, which is now defunct, under a man by the name of Jeff Peterson. A lot of history between these two men. A lot of shared rubber down the road. Mike Keener almost run over trying to clear the ring of Chris Wilde's various pieces of paraphernalia. I mean, let's call it for what it is. If you're an ECWA fan who knows not much about Mark Haro, you're looking at him and saying, what chance does this guy have against the former Mid-Atlantic, or the current Mid-Atlantic champion, former heavyweight champion, arguably the most popular wrestler in ECWA history. But the thing you have to know about Mark Haro is this. He is not what he sees. No. The cover on the book lies to you. He is exceptionally athletic. We saw it in his match in December. A lot of flying knees, a lot of innovative offense. He hits you in asymmetric ways, in ways you're not expecting. That's what he's going to look to do tonight against the guy who knows him in Chris Wilde. What the? Whoa. It was impressive until he got drop kicked off the ring apron. Is that one of those I meant to do that moments? And now Chris Wilde stalking him from the apron. Oh, but Haro sweeps the leg. Cobra Kai style. 
and a suplex oh, to the floor. To the floor. No padding, no forgiveness. Spine on hard surface. Oh, humanity. The chiropractor's wet dream out here. And Haro, one of those patented knees. He is a tough son of a gun. And a little unhinged. He came out here wearing a chain, like oh. it was clothing. I, I think the haircut gives it away. What kind of job can you have in real life where you can have a haircut? More importantly, can I have that job? Haro in control now, dropping one of those knees right across the sternum. Well, giving the belt back, it looks like uh, everything must go. Well, we still have little Mikey's phone. It was under the belt. That's why I couldn't see it. <laughs> I made a great duck face. Haro the cover, albeit lackadaisical. Two counts as Mike Keenan. You know, when you see these personal issues, boil over into, into matches like this. You, you, you kind of wonder, like, you're two guys that know each other. At one point, you like each other. What has to happen for a relationship to devolve to the point where you want to come to blow? Jealousy. Tail as old as time. I think, I think Haro saw where he used to be and wants back in. That's a very valid point. And in the interim, oh, by the way, Chris Wilde wins the heavyweight title. That's one of the most impressive defense streaks we've ever seen in terms of match after match after match in short duration. He loses that belt, comes back, wins the Mid-Atlantic title with his career on the line back in December. Short right from Mark Haro. Big leg up across the throat. Oh my God, are you kidding me? That's what I mean, folks. That is what I mean about Mark Haro. That man with the crazy haircut, and let's be honest, the less than flattering physique, just hit a standing, running, shooting star press in the middle of the ring. You wanna know about Mark Haro? That's all you needed to know. Pressure on that, right under that chin. Wild back to vertical base. And the back elbow. And another. Third time's a charm. Bahara buries the boot. Man, the offensive variety from Mark Haro. Nice suplex, Northern Lights, Bridges, two! Kick out by Haro. Impressive suplex from nowhere by Chris Wild. And there, the big knee lift, and this crowd in stunned silence. I'm in stunned silence, I'm enjoying what I'm seeing. I'm saying sign Haro right now into the ECWA. In spite of the fact that he jumped the rail unprovoked, he laid me out, he laid out a security member, he basically hijacked the show. He stole the spotlight from KO Storm when he was announcing the tournament. Then he finds Chris Wilde in the parking lot, beats him with a chain, and you're gonna reward him with a contract? Uh, put him on retainer. I mean, no, no offense to you. you, you know, that shouldn't have happened, I agree. But that's leaving a mark. That is leaving a mark. If you, be, if you wanna be noticed, he got noticed. That's a fair point. I guess it's the old ends means dichotomy. I said it, there's a cover. Kick out for two and a half. I said it when Ricky Martinez beat Papadon. Forget the means, they were what they were, but because of the ends, they were worth it. So I guess if you're Mark Haro, hey, you got a shot tonight at the Mid-Atlantic title. If you win, you go from zero to Mid-Atlantic champion like that. Like I said, he's leaving a mark. He may have bullied his way in, but 
you know, it, it's almost to the point where once you're in, you're in, you have a shot. Cover two and a half, but Haro counters cross face. He's got the cross face locked in. He caught the loose arm of Chris Wild. Great ring position. Could this be the move that gives Mark Haro a stunning upset? Oh, he's pulling on it. Wild counters. Two. And now the Kata Hajime. The Kata Hajime, the move that got him the heavyweight title. They're trading submissions. Will this be enough to put away Mark Haro? And if Haro loses, where does he go from there? He goes home. That's it. Done. Win, win or go home. He's first got to fight out of the Kata Hajime. He gets back to vertical base. Wild on his back and wild. Back first into the corner. Big crowd here tonight in Newark, Delaware, taking in Spring Battle 3. The final stop on the road to the Super 8. And did you see that knee? This guy hits knees from Impressive. everywhere. And almost another one, and he went outside. Mark Haro crashing to the floor for a second time tonight. And now maybe will Chris Wilde look to go high risk, high reward, inside out. Haro's back up. Here goes Wilde. Yes, sir. A tornado oh my DDT. God. All that torque and momentum. Physics sending Mark Haro crashing headlong into the floor. Mike Keener goes to the floor to check on both men. They're both able to continue, albeit temporarily waylaid, and Mike Keener will issue the 10 count. I don't know how either of them are gonna get up after that. That was like a car crash. Unbelievable. Crowd's on its feet checking this one out. First a suplex on the floor, then a tornado DDT. Both men back to the ring. Been a hell of a match. It's been brutal, there's been impressive wrestling moves. Everything you could want between two guys who just flat out do not like each other. Wow, the headbutt. Haro a headbutt. That one almost to the back of the head of Chris Wilde. Right hand from Haro. Thunderous blows from Haro. But a huge back elbow, oh, super kick, nobody home. But for the clothesline, he connects. Another clothesline from the heart killer. It is momentum offense here from the heart killer, Chris Wilde. Big back elbow. Wild crashing into the corner. Sizes him up, wants the bulldog. I think it was right into the turnbuckle. I don't know who took the brunt of that one. What the hell is Chris Wild gonna do here? The double stomp. And then he crashes in. Without regard for life or limb, Chris Wild, cover, two. Kick out at two and change, says Mike Keener. Wild going upstairs again. Taking a little time though, might cost him. Haro's up. And Haro dings the top rope and sends Wild to the seated position. He's got him in a perfect position. Fisherman Buster! Beautiful Fisherman Buster, that might do it. Hooks a leg, two, two and three quarters. Chris Wild kicks out. 
and you know, I have to say, it almost looked like Mike Keener kind of whiffed on the first strike of the hand. He wasn't quite sure of that first part of the fall. Maybe that was Mark Haro's moment. We'll never know. Haro's looking a little frustrated at the moment. Well, I'll say this. He has certainly pushed Chris Wilde to the limit tonight. Wanted the super kick again, countered. Flips out. Oh my, my God! One, two, two and seven, eight! How? The move that put away Ricky Martinez! And Mark Haro kicks, where did that come from? Are you kidding me? I don't know, at this point, we need th two refs out here. Dear I God, how unbelievable. This crowd erupted when that connected. Oh, wait a minute, Haro's got him up now. Death Valley driver, could that be a one, two, three, no! Two and nine tenths, says Mike Keener. He's hardly saying it, he looks like he's out of breath. Forget your cardio today. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. He's grabbing that chain. Haro's going for the chain. I think he uh, doesn't care about the outcome at this point. He just wants to take more punishment and delve it out onto Chris Wilde. Well, if you're trying to get into the ECWA, this wait, wait, is not wait the way to do wait it. Wait a uh -oh. minute. Wilde has the chain around his fist, and that's going to prompt the bell. He wrapped the loose end and struck Haro. And that's going to be a DQ on Chris Wilde, but this fight is far from over as both men continue to go at each other. Now, wait a minute. He's choking him with the chain. Oh, we're going to need some help to break this one up. Mike Keener calling for some help from the back as Mark Haro choking we out. We need some security in there. Chris Wilde with a chain. We've got security diving in. This is reminiscent of uh, January with Mark Haro. Look at the number of men it takes to get Haro off of Wild. Oh, wait a minute. Are they taking him to the back or taking him outside? has disqualified Chris Wild for using the chain. Your winner, Mark Haro. Mark brought the chain in, Chris but Chris used it. The championship belt. Well, Wilde's still your Mid-Atlantic champion because you can't change hands on a disqualification. You know, a couple months ago, the heart killer Chris Wilde won the ECWA Mid-Atlantic Championship. And when I did that, I hashtag challenged the world. Anybody from anywhere at any time can come to the ECWA and challenge me for the Mid-Atlantic Championship. See, I wanted to bring the focus back on the gold that mattered the most. You see, as of right now, there's no champion in ECWA because of an injury to Kakoa. So I am the champion, Mark Haro, a guy I know better than anybody, decides he wants to cross the barrier here at ECWA. He wants to jump over the railing and jump me, and then later on jump me in a parking lot to my gym. Mark Haro, I went on camera from my home and I challenged you. I made fun of your voice. I referenced Mike Tyson. I used Google. I did everything I could so that Joe Zanol and Mike Tartaglia would give me you in the ring in front of my fans. I look on Facebook and I see that they have me and you in a match, but it's not for the ECWA Mid-Atlantic Championship. That's not good enough for me. I hashtag challenge the world, and that's why tonight when I walked out to the ring, the match was for the championship. And Mark, you fought me tooth and nail. And you know, like I said, I did everything to get you in the ring. Made fun of your voice. I promise I won't do that this time. But you gave me everything I could handle and more. And at the end of the day, it was the chain that you used on me that spelled the end of you. You know, Mike Tyson once said that he would beat his opponents until they loved him. Mark, I'm not done with you. As a matter of fact, I want to beat you, but I don't want you to love me afterwards. I want you to hate me even more than you do now. And maybe we'll just do that in the future.
<laughs> I said I was gonna, <laughs> wasn't gonna make fun of your voice. I guess I broke my promise. Just like I'm gonna do to you. Hashtag challenge the world.